Hey everyone, I didn't film an intro yesterday to this project, so I'm doing it now, even though I'm finishing up with it. So, uh, I really didn't know what I was getting into and how to do this job, so I didn't really, I just kind of time-lapsed and filmed a lot of pulling different things, trying different things. So basically, what we did on this car, this is a 2013 Lincoln MKS. It's a V6 3.7 liter all-wheel drive, and it was getting uh, codes for uh, the catalytic converter, the rear one, against the firewall. And uh, this person had it quoted through the dealer to get it changed, and uh, I decided to help and see if I could do it for him, help him save some money. And uh, he got the parts, so we went ahead and took it on. Uh, I could not find anything online at all for how to pull the cat, how to do anything on this car. So this was all, this is all learning experience for me and basically trying different things. So originally I wanted to try and pull, I knew we were going to have to pull the intake manifold off as soon as I climbed under the car and saw that there's no way to get to those manifold bolts. So we pulled the intake manifold off and it allowed very open access to all the uh, all the bolts for the uh, catalytic converter manifold. So I was able to get to all those, but it does not fit coming up through the top, unfortunately. So unfortunately, we had to go back down underneath. Uh, I was trying to pry the mid pipe down without without undoing the front mid pipe. So I was trying to only pry take the one down to pull it out. Ended up having to drop both which careful with those those studs were stuck and we broke one luckily on the cat we were replacing and the other one had to work very carefully to get that nut off so I wouldn't break it so we're waiting on a gasket and new nuts to attach that back up but as I found out pulling that there's still not enough room it was hitting on the axle so we pulled the axle out um, let me get a light. So I pulled the axle out and uh, I tried to just undo that, that uh, mount there and move it a little bit out of the way. But the cat was still hitting the, uh, the shaft so we ended up having to undo the, uh, the axle completely, drop this hub down and pull the axle completely out of the way. Once the axle was out, the mid pipes are down and out of the way, the, the cat came right out through the bottom, not a problem. So future reference, I know that you do have to pull the axle, the passenger side axle, the, uh, you have to drop the whole exhaust there, the mid pipe, and you have to pull the intake manifold to replace this cat. Would have saved me a lot of time yesterday instead of I was trying to fin dangle it trying to get it out through the top I wasted a lot of time trying to do that and I wasted a lot of time trying to work my way around this axle uh, when it's just it's not it's not capable of doing that so for next time if I ever did this job again I'll definitely definitely be able to shave some time off knowing exactly what I have to do this go around the next go around I mean so that's a little bit of the background of this so this video I can kind of show you how to do the top half remove the top half of the intake manifold and then replace that uh, converter on the back side so hopefully this will help somebody out that's in a similar situation since I searched I couldn't find anything on how to do this so uh, we'll go ahead and get into the time lapses of me taking it apart and I'll see if I can narrate along the way and I got a lot more a lot more information going back together as uh as I knew where stuff, how stuff came apart and where it went, so. So yeah, hope y'all enjoy and hopefully this will help somebody out.
There it is back there. You can see it. So, moving the intake manifold definitely gives you all the space in the world to get to it back here. But the real question is, is can we either fish it around the transfer case to drop it below or fish it around the transfer case to pull it up through this little area up here. That is my main concern currently. My light's a little dim, but this is what I was talking about. So we got the transfer case there with the uh, axle half shaft. And then there's the cat we gotta replace, the mid pipe. And I just really don't see any way of pulling it down through here without removing a lot of additional stuff. So we're gonna try and unbolt it and then remove it from the top if we can. So we'll see how this goes. pulled a Lincoln half shaft out it is really long and it's it's not a sealed system so we're losing a ton of fluid but hopefully I can snake the cat out of there now but uh, we'll see Yes! The cat's out. I uh, pulled a few studs with uh, the nuts on the uh, head, so we got some new studs and nuts here. So I'm going to go ahead and thread the studs that came out back into the head before I fish this uh, new catalytic converter up into its place. I replaced two of the studs and got our new cat fished up in there. So just got to kind of have it kind of sitting up here so I can uh, grab it from the top. And uh, we'll uh, put the new gasket on and get it lined up and get it held up with some bolts and then hopefully I can go ahead and reassemble the axle I had to pull out of here and get that all back together and then just reassembly from here so we should be uh should be good to go now it's much easier getting that thing in and out with uh, the axle pulled I don't see any way I mean, correct me if I'm wrong if somebody's done this before, but I don't see any way of getting that out of this hole without the axle out of the way. So here's the new manifold gasket. It's got these little, like, grips that grip onto the uh, studs. Same on this side to kind of hold it in place. It's got a little heat shield going across. So we'll go ahead and install this next.
tied all the nuts around. Start tightening them up. Start from the middle and work our way out. Okay, the uh, manifold's on tight, good to go. So now we're gonna put the heat shield back on the top that we removed, and then the, uh, the pre-cat O2 sensor. Always good to anti-seize any type of exhaust bolts so they don't get stuck if you ever have to pull them out again. Those are 10 millimeter heads. Okay, the shield's on. If you do a lot of mechanic work, especially exhaust work, I highly recommend one of these sockets for the O2 sensor with the uh, slot so the wire can fit through. It makes life a lot easier. All right, cat's bolted up tight, O2 sensors in in the top, heat shields on. We're good from the top. I'm going to go ahead and put the bottom O2 sensor in and run the wiring up here before I start putting together the top half of the motor again. We'll probably go ahead and finish out the bottom 
first. So I'm waiting on, unfortunately, Ford's closed today and I need a gasket for that pipe. So we won't be able to finish it up today. But I should be able to get everything together minus that pipe. There she is all bolted into place. And you can see how tight it is and how tight it is with that uh when the axle is going through here there's really no way to fish that thing out without pulling the axle out so very very tight area for sure so we'll go ahead and get O2 sensor in it goes right here run the wiring up top through that little uh, cable cable hook and then plug it in up there and that's it for the cat until we can bolt the exhaust back up and we'll go ahead and put the axle back in and get that all tightened up a little bit anti seize on these threads Screw that guy in videos decent or not I can't tell up in our cable tie we'll go ahead and plug it in that's it right there all right it's gonna be the worst part trying to get this axle in because everything on this car is super heavy so got that long guy here You gotta fish it through there so I'm gonna pull this bolt out you're actually able to get enough space just pulling these two strut bolts out and uh, undid the uh, speed sensor or ABS sensor just so I wouldn't break it and just had to undo this little leveling sensor here but with this pulled you're able to pull the hub far enough out to maneuver the axle out so That was a struggle. So axles in, it's through. One bolt holding it in. Now we gotta mount a little bearing up there for the half shaft. Get this all bolted together. One thing I wanted to point out on these, this is new to me. I've never seen a a spline like fit almost like a wheel stud to when this is basically pushed in or pulled all the way through it won't allow that bolt to turn so pulling these out was kind of a pain you really had to hammer on the back side of the bolt to pop those out to get those free uh, I don't work in too many domestic cars so I don't know if that's common with Fords or what but something new to me I've never seen that all right, with the axle back in, I wanted to get back underneath and show the clearance that we really don't have. So 
yeah, definitely have to take the axle out to get this out. We'll go ahead and clean up this mess over here. It looks like it's also got a previous leak as well. Um, we'll put the exhaust back up on the hangers. Get the mid pipes bolted up. I still need a gasket for this right here. So I'll have to get that tomorrow before we can finalize everything. So yeah, get this stuff situated and then move on to the intake manifold. Okay, so we're prepping to put our intake manifold back on. I'm gonna have it covered up here. Uh, we gotta put back on this hose over here that goes on the back of the valve cover. And there's also a bracket right here that supports the manifold down there so we got to put that back on and then we can uh, lower the manifold back on and start reconnecting everything we have the manifold here it's an old gasket so we'll pull this off and I got a Felpro replacement gasket MS97214 luckily they just sell the upper half instead of the full kit because it's a significant price difference buying the full gasket kit when you only need this top one so we'll go ahead and pull this gasket out replace it with our new gasket and then pull the tape back and fit our manifold back on Right, we're going to torque the manifold bolts to 89 inch pounds. Okay, with the bolts tight, I have that bracket tight in the back. I attach this hose back here. Now we'll just uh, start running our hoses and connectors. Alright, just do a once over and double check, make sure everything's tight and where it needs to go. Uh, got our intake tube back on, all our vacuum lines are hooked back up, crankcase vents hooked back up on the back side there, our throttle body, our evap purge is hooked up, and our uh, overflow coolant line. And the uh, Intakes torque down. Everything looks good. Put the vanity cover back on and we're good up top. Almost forgot, gotta put the big strut bar back on. The, the struts that bolt there.
So the vanity cover's back on. I just gotta wait for the exhaust gasket for the front cat to the mid pipe and some bolts for the mid pipe. And then we can bolt the exhaust back up and start it, clear all the codes. I also need to, we lost some transmission fluid due to pulling the axle, so I also need to add fluid as well. But all in all, it was a pretty involved job. Definitely did not know what I was getting into with this, but came out good and hopefully that'll fix the codes that's on the car and should be good to go. So it's the next day. Uh, we got the exhaust bolted up. She's all running. Checked for leaks. No leaks. Got her new nuts, a new gasket on there. New nuts over there. It's burning off all the anti-seize and the old PB blaster trying to get the exhaust apart. So let it run. We went in and cleared the code, which was a PO430 uh, Bank 2 Catalyst Efficiency code. So, so far the check engine light's not back on, but uh, we'll get it off the exhaust, uh, exhaust. we'll get it off the uh, jack stands here, take it around for a little drive, drive it around, make sure everything's good, 